Hello everyone. In this video, I will focus on how two different kinds of fixed income portfolios perform relative to changes in market yield and shifts in the yield curve's slope. The two portfolio strategies I test are barbell portfolios, or portfolios with exposure to both ends of the yield curve, and bullet portfolios, or portfolios with exposure to one point in the yield curve. To test performance, I compare the net present value of investments in both portfolios during parallel shifts, flattening, and steepening of the yield curve. My model assumes three different market yields, 5-year, 10-year, and 20-year yields. Those three yields make up this model's yield curve. In the previous videos, I would calculate convexity by cycling through a single point on the yield curve, assuming that all bonds are benchmarked against a single yield. However, because investors typically expect to be compensated at a higher yield for longer-term investments, yield expectations for different maturities differ. Therefore, to test the performance of portfolio strategies, we should test how the changes in yield curves affect the relative performance of the portfolios. To fully explain what I mean, let's dive into the model I built to explore the relative performances of the barbell and bullet portfolios. I modeled three different bonds. Bond A with a 5-year maturity and 8% coupon, Bond B with a 20-year maturity and 10% coupon, and Bond C with a 10-year maturity and 9% coupon. I assume that the bonds are traded at par to standardize the bond prices and yield to maturity. If you are curious why standardization of bond prices when comparing yields and convexity is essential, please refer to my video on duration and convexity. At par, bond A has a duration of 3.6, bond C has a duration of 6.5, and bond B has a duration of 9.2. Then I sensitize the net present value of all three bonds to changes in market yield. The required market yield changes by 25 basis points for the middle of the yield curve, or the required yield for bond C. This change of 25 basis points is constant in the parallel, steepening, and flattening of the yield curve. In the parallel shift, the spread between the 5-year and 20-year yield is 2%. In the flattening of the yield curve, the required market yield changes by the same number of basis points, 25, but the spread between the 5-year and 20-year has decreased to 1.5%. For the steepening of the yield curve, the yield spread increases to 2.5%. Moving on to the portfolio deltas. This is where I modeled the performance of the two portfolios. The bullet portfolio is 100% weighted towards the middle of the yield curve, comprising 100% of bond C whereas the barbell portfolio is weighted towards either end of the yield curve, with 50% towards the 5-year maturity bond A and 50% towards the 20-year maturity bond B. Then, I calculate the under or over performance of the bullet portfolio. This is done by subtracting the NPV of the barbell portfolio from the NPV of the bullet portfolio. A negative number means that the barbell outperforms the bullet, whereas a positive number means that the barbell underperforms relative to the bullet. I use the same VBA strategy which I created to calculate bond convexities in previous videos. The basic framework for that code is available in the description. Looking back at the outputs here, you'll see that the convexities of the three bonds are as expected. The 20-year B bond has the highest convexity, followed by the 10-year C bond, with the 5-year A bond having the least convexity. What's key to understand is that although the two portfolios have a similar duration at a given interest rate, the convexities of the two portfolios are different. In this case, the barbell portfolio's convexity is higher than the bullet portfolio's on average. Considering the barbell's NPV, there are two values at play, the value of the low duration bond and the value of the high duration bond. The high duration bond will be most affected by changes in yields, while the low duration bond will be the least affected by changes in yields. In the parallel shift, which you can see here, what is happening is that the low duration bond hedges the interest rate risk as required yields rise, protecting the barbell portfolio from downside, while the high duration bond is amplifying returns when required yields fall. 
Another way to look at how parallel shifts in yields affect either portfolio is by looking at the slope in the NPV rate of change. As you can see, the barbell rate of change decreases as yields rise, protecting value, while the barbell rate of change increases as yields fall, creating value. However, the bullet portfolio outperforms the barbell portfolio when yields drop between 0.25% and 2%. In that case, the rate of change of the bullet portfolio rises faster than the rate of change of the barbell portfolio, leading to a higher NPV. The impact of either strategy on a portfolio's net present value is amplified when the yield curve steepens or flattens. When the yield curve flattens, the spread between the long-term and short-term maturity yields is reduced. Effectively, required yields on short-term maturities increase, while required yields on long-term maturities decrease. In this model, I reduced the spread between the 5-year and 20-year by 50 basis points, with required yields increasing for short-term bonds and yields decreasing for long-term bonds, duration further decreases for the short-term bond and increases for the long-term bond. Therefore, the benefits I outline when the yield curve shifts in a parallel manner are increased in the case of a yield curve flattening. On the other hand, when the yield curve steepens, the opposite happens. As required yields increase for long-term maturities and decrease for short-term maturities, duration for the A bond increases while duration for the B bond decreases. Since bonds with higher durations are more sensitive to interest rate hikes, the long-term bond price decreases more than the short-term bond increases, leading to a lower NPV. Therefore, the effect is that there is additional room for the bullet portfolio to outperform the barbell portfolio when yields steepen. So overall, one strategy is not better than the other. The performance of a portfolio concentrated in the middle of the yield curve or of a portfolio with exposure to either end of the yield curve depends on how the yield curve shifts. One portfolio strategy is not dominant, besides in the case of the yield curve flattening. Additionally, my model assumes that the yield spread between short-term and long-term bonds is constant, either at 2%, 1.5%, or 2.5%. Obviously, the spread can and does change between different maturities, which would impact how either portfolio performs. Thanks for watching.